love, sex, desire, drama, lovers, and the others. <laughs> and we talk about it all here on Relationship. Greetings and welcome to Relationship Rhetoric. I'm Unapologetically Angela, your host. And with us today, we have Kat and Shay, another amazing couple here with us. So we are going to take some time to get to know them a little better. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. So we're going to jump right in. Okay. okay. Feel comfortable. Be yourself. And if at any point you are uncomfortable, let me know. Okay. Okay. All right. So what initially attracted you to each other? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's such a complicated question because for me, we were legitimately friends first. Okay. So what attracted me to her as a friend was just that she seemed um, open at the time. She was starting a spiritual journey and uh, talking about cleansing herself and getting this new energy and she seemed really, really passionate about it. And she seemed really, really open and honest about it. And so that's like one of the things that I'm always interested in is people who are, you know, in their journey. So that was the first kind of thing that that I remember striking me about her. Okay. Okay. So I like challenges. And even from a friendship level, the thing about Shay was she was very closed off. And, but because I was on this like spiritual journey, I was like really in tune with like feeling other people's energy. Mm -hmm. And anytime that I would get around her um, I would sense that there was something more like to her than what she was showing or what she wanted everybody else to see so it, it intrigued me and I wanted to find out more and you know a big part of me wanted to to kind of break her shell so that's what a that's challenge what. to conquer okay <laughs> all right um so what was the beginning of the relationship like so the beginning of our relationship was friendship. So we started out as strictly friends. Um, I was going through a lot and I was in the middle of uh, ultimately a divorce or a breakup from my husband who I had been with over 10 years. And uh, she was coming through this spiritual journey which was cleansing a lot of her friends. So we just spent a lot of time together just kind of talking about stuff. like. I believe in the beginning she was just a, a safe space for me. Mm -hmm. So she was some place I could go and everybody wasn't asking questions about what's going on, what you're going to do, this, 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 this. And she never seemed to come with any judgment and she always seemed to be genuinely concerned about how I was doing. So that was the start for me. Um, she, uh... She taught me how to be a friend. Um, so, what was the question again? What was the beginning of the relationship oh, like? That's what it was. Okay. Because I, I was in my head trying to answer the question while she was talking. But, <laughs> um, but the beginning of our relationship was because I was going through my spiritual journey, because I was cleansing friendships. Honestly, like, if looking back, I was never really a friend to anybody. Mm -hmm. Um like they were always friends to me like I was they would always confide in me um and my my relationships with people friendship or romantic was very surface level um until Shay and I like got closer and when she started coming over and and confiding in me like I remember like specifically making a conscious decision to be a better friend and that was pretty much like the beginning of my relationship with her was like being a better person and specifically being a better friend period so okay so you started out as friends you had opportunities to combine confide in each other and share things so what happened so that's a weird thing. <laughs> I know what happened. Okay. So before what happened so before it was officially like okay you crossed this line um I don't, it was so, 
Who has crossed that line, though? Because I'm looking at New Year's Eve has crossed that line. Like, th that's what I'm looking at is being the beginning of us. I don't. I think that was the first time that we, that there was a weird feeling other than friendship. Kind of like, what is, kind of, what is that? Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't consider it the beginning of us. Mm -hmm. But, um, so there was like, so there were all of these. So we, so that was the time <laughs> when it was the first time in our friendship where it was like, uh, it's something else there. Are we going to deal with it? Or are we mm -hmm. going to act like we don't see it? And we talked about it and then pushed it under the rug. You think it was earlier? No, it wasn't earlier. Oh, that was New Year's. So anyway, um, it was always just, so as we got closer, it was just, I can't, I don't know. It was just, so where before we would be sitting on the couch like this, talking. So, yeah, so it was like when we first would come over. I wouldn't even be on the couch. She would like, be in a chair. I would be in the chair. Like, yeah, we would be very. But we'd be very separate. open with each other. And so it was like one day we looked up. And I believe that was our friend's birthday. The first time we, our friends called us and was like, so, bitch, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, what you mean? She was like, okay, so y'all was leaned up on the couch. Like, we be leaned up on the couch. And they were in a relationship. And so I was like, what are you talking about? We was just chilling. And she was like, but it was how y'all was chilling. Mm -hmm. And so we was like, nah, we was just comfortable this with this. birthday party was after New Year's? Yes, it was after New Year's. After New Year's. It was two months after New Year's. Okay. So you, can I tell what happened? You I'm tell yourself. Like, can, can I tell New what Year's. happened New Year's? It wasn't New Year's the day before, the when we got into the argument that came over there? Yeah. Okay, that was the day before New Year's. Okay, can yeah. I say that? You can. Okay, so this is what happened. Let me tell you this. Okay, so I told you, let's rewind one. I told you that I made the conscious decision about being a good friend, blah, blah, right. blah, right? So, so the thing about Shay is that she can tell you something. Like, she means what she says. Me, I'm used to dealing with people who don't mean what they say. Mm -hmm. So if they say, uh, I want you to come with me somewhere, and I say, I, I can't make it, they'll be like, oh, it's cool, right? Mm -hmm. I take it as that. It's cool, right? So with her... Like, because she says what she means, I wasn't used to that. So there was a time, like, she asked me to go several places, and I'd be like, I'll make up some excuse, like, ah, I'm not going. Because to me, it didn't, like, I wasn't feeling it, or, like, I didn't know that it meant that much to her, right? Because had I known that it meant that much to her, I would have went. But, so, apparently it got too much for her, and then she broke up with me as a friend. <laughs> like, she called me, and we were talking, and she was, like, basically, like, you know, I see that this friendship ain't working. I'm just going to treat you accordingly, blah, blah, blah. We get into this whole big argument. And she she actually messed with me the other day about, like, I, I forgot what she said. But I was, like, I was emotional because I was, like, I was really trying to be her friend. Now she's breaking up with me. I was, like, well, what else do you want me to do, Shahid? No, 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 It was the tone. Oh. So here's the thing. So we arguing back and forth. And I was, like, so here's my issue. I've asked you to go surface. So Kat is one of those surface level nice people. <laughs> and so what that means is that she's always like, oh girl, oh I'm so sorry. Bro. Light and energy and all this and right then in the moment. But an hour later she'd be like, oh girl, I'm kind of not feeling it. <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying? So so my thing is like, so it was my, my, what came, happened was my brother was in town. So my youngest brother who's in the army. And like she said, I'm very, very close out. So I don't extend the invitations into who I am and the people that are close to me to people unless they're close to me. So it's not like I'd be like, yeah, we finna turn up with my brother. All of us come out. No, there are people who have been in my life for years who don't, haven't met my family or my brother. You know what I'm saying? So I extended her the invite. We chose the, uh, a location close to her. She was initially like she was going to come. Then the last minute was like, yeah, no. So this had been like the fifth time that this happened. And I was like, I'm very much a person that, so if I tell you I'm going to come, whether it's to your party, whether it's to, you know, whatever. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Very rarely am I not. And if I don't, I legitimately made the attempt. I'm just, I spent too much of my time on the other side of this. So, like right. I said, I earn these morals. <laughs> right. I earn these morals.
forms, but I take, you know, so I value my word and I value the word of other people. So Kat is, a, I call her a loose committer. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah, girl, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll do that for you. And then a month later when she's no longer feeling it, but that's, it's time for the commitment, she bags out. Mm-hmm. So we were uh, arguing about that. And what happens when she gets directly confronted is she shuts down. So she becomes also very passive aggressive. And she was like, well, I told you I'm sorry. So what else do you want me to do, Shahida? That's the way she said it. I will never. Because it made me so mad. Like, now, now, as a friend, I understand why it made me mad. But it made me so mad. Like, it was like, I was, I drove over there. Like, Okay. So I so I have to question all that later on, like what made me, why why am I disinvested? You mm-hmm. know. What I'm so like I said, that was the first time it was kind of. But when we got there, we talked, and one of the things that I told her was that you know, as open as I am with you, I don't know anything about. I didn't know anything about her. So you, I'm telling you, and I'm pouring out my heart to you about the situations I'm going through and the things that I'm dealing with. But I didn't know her dad's name or that mm-hmm. she had a brother or. None of this stuff. So she was very much so not reciprocal. And so that night we stayed up, one, was the first night we ever, like, physically touched. And not even, like, in a sexual sense, just, like, meaning touch like this. Because most of the time, I'm also not a toucher. So that's a big thing for me. Like, it doesn't make sense when I say it. (laughs) But it's like when people touch me, like, I take whatever they have going on. So I don't like for people that I haven't, like approve of their energy to touch me so i've gotten better because she's a hugger Mm -hmm. and normally because she's a hugger people hug her they're gonna hug me and so it was getting real weird people be like your girlfriend don't like me (laughs) because she be like (laughs) so i've gotten better but so that was like the first time that we were even like she was in my personal space in any way so that was like i feel like that was a breakthrough for our friendship And it was weird because for her, I think we were moving in different spaces. So that was a big breakthrough for us in our friendship. And I regard it as that because that was the first time I got to know who she was as a person. But I don't necessarily feel like it was a breakthrough in us as a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I guess, like, we look at it different because mm, the, the feeling was different. Like it was more intimate. It wasn't, yeah. and it wasn't a friendship intimate though. For you. For you. Well, for me. Yes. yes. For me. So. Did you ever find out what made you drive over there? Did you ever get any clarity? No. Because I'm not driving over no friend's house. Like but but so that's the other thing. So she also says that she also says that too. But my friendships are very intimate. Okay. My circle but is very not, very. My circle is very. You're not. You're not. Ah, uh, you're not doing that. What happened? So this is what I did. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking. So, but so it was, I rubbed her hair. I hope okay. you ain't doing that to none of your other friends. Well, no, I don't have black friends. Okay. And I, I can't mess with their. I can't mess with their ways. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the gray area, right there. That's what started the gray area that we used to. So, so it was like. Friendship, relationship, but like, okay, here I'll agree that that was the okay. side of the gray. Area. Okay, okay, <laughs> but I think I think again I think it meant the relationship was further down, but yeah. that was definitely gray area. Like, what what is this? So now then you there begin to have the conversation. Okay, so what's going on? Yeah. So we Let start. Me. So no, I start the conversation. Oh, yeah. the next she time. runs from the conversation <laughs> and she stops then being my friend. She breaks up with me as a friend. No, I yes, oh, you did. Oh, did. Yes, she did. This was later on. No, this was like three weeks later. This was like three weeks later. It was like February, right? So the, uh, a month later. <laughs> so a month later, she can't deal with because I'm a I'm like a person I don't like to guess and see. So I'm like, so what? What's what? What what? What this is? What's got right. whatever? So she didn't brace up with me. As my friend, she was pretty much like, it's a lot going on. You still over there doing this. I don't know. I ain't that holla. So. I didn't say it like that. She pretty much said it like that. And it was through Facebook. Ooh. It was not through Facebook. We talked. No, 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 no. After you Facebooked me, we talked. Because I was like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook me. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Oh. Yeah. And then you tried, then you got the phone, you tried to Facebook me again, then I called you again, and then we went back and forth. So then we agreed to be like in, we just cool, we just this. So again, like I said, it was such a back and forth. <laughs> Somewhere in June, it happened. So it came together. Yes. Yeah, this is the this is all the lead up. This is all the lead up. Okay. Because actually, like this went on. So this is, so let, let's, let me clarify this. This is not June of the same year. This is June of the previous year. All of this is going on for like a year because the turning point for me, the very first, like very much so turning point for me, I can't remember, was it before or after? Had I had surgery before or after this? After New Year's? Yeah. You had surgery in like November. Right. And then I had this, I had another surgery in January. So was that this, the January of this? January of 2013. Right. So it was after this, right? Yeah. With the breakup and stuff? Yeah, before that. The breakup was after. So I had surgery. I had three surgeries. So I believe in November of 2012, I had my appendix ruptured and I had to go to the emergency room. And Kat was there. And I believe that January, I had, and it can't be, too, this had to be 2013 though. It was 2013. So, they had to be a year later. So we're talking a year later. That January was a year later. Because it was the surgery, at, so after I had my appendix out, that January I had my gallbladder removed. And then in May, I had um, a portion of my stomach removed for, for an ulcer mm. um, and all of that. Because this was all after Dream Fest. So this was all after Dream Fest. Of 2013. Yeah. So particularly the gallbladder surgery and then coming back in May, she was very, very, like I had never had anybody take care of me like that. Like mm -hmm. I'm very strong and people are always, and I'm always taking care of other people. Mm -hmm. So it was my first experience being cared for. Mm -hmm. And so I remember that more than anything being a big deal to me and so that was the first time that made me because before then i was all like i like cat and there's some weird things coming on here but i don't really like girls and i don't really even know how they work you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying from a physical standpoint <laughs> like what do, what am i supposed to do what what is that mm -hmm. so i'm not interested so the first thing that made me think from a uh i guess a cerebral sense about a relationship was just that i hadn't had nobody care for me in that way before and so that has always stayed with me okay why the frown because i'm trying to think of the timeline mm -hmm. it's okay yeah i'm it's trying okay. to think of the timeline it's important because it's been all where you are yeah it's just, <laughs> it's, so like, so it's just much a blur like yeah before leading up to us but, okay yeah <clears throat> How important is monogamy in your relationship? Very important. It's very important to her, so it's very important to me. Monogamy in general in relationships, not necessarily. But what's very important to me is whatever boundaries and established ideas and things that we come to together as a unit, mm -hmm. that we both adhere and abide by them. Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing for her. So that's a big part of our relationship. Okay, so then that brings me to my next question. What is a deal breaker for the relationship? Have you discussed, okay, this cannot happen. This will not happen. This is unacceptable. Yeah, we've talked about it. Um, like for me, would be mine would be similar to hers like the breaking of the trust you know because that that's a big like component of our relationship because especially with what her and I do like being in the entertainment industry and like you know we talking to multiple people we're going out sometimes we got to go out with, without one another there's like a big comfort of knowing that I don't ever have to worry about like her doing something else with somebody you know mm -hmm or creating a relationship, like an inappropriate relationship with somebody. So I think like in any sense, like that trust is broken. That's, that's definitely a deal breaker because I wouldn't, you know, I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm like worrying 
about what's going on. You know? Absolutely. And that's the thing to me is just that I'm the type of person that we can be upfront and work through anything. So anything that breaks the trust is a deal breaker for me because that's the biggest comfort of being in this relationship. That's the biggest comfort for me of our relationships, whether it's friendship, business, whatever, is my ability to trust that you do what you say you're going to do. And so, again, it goes back to the whole, you know, commitment thing, even the little things, like those things mean a lot to me, which is why I try to make sure that I don't commit loosely. I don't say things that I don't mean because I want to be able to hold you accountable to that same standard. So for me, I want to be able to trust that she's going to do exactly what she says she's going to do. Very nice. Very nice. What was your most memorable date? You can go first. Maybe. You can go if they can. Okay. Man, mine is when we went to Nashville. Okay. What happened? Where'd you go? Uh, everywhere. Just, she just showed me, like, it was just being with her, like, for a few days, and it's just being us, and us just going out to eat, and us just having a good time, and it was just the first time, like, I was able to, like, get away with her, mm-hmm. so that always stick in the, the back of my mind. Um, memorable? I would say um, I like any of the dates where I've gotten to show her something new. Mm-hmm. So she's very closed off and she doesn't like to try new things. So any of the times that I've taken her somewhere and she stepped outside of her comfort zone and she's liked it. So there's been like different restaurants. There have been like different types of events. Just like doing different stuff that she that I get to introduce her to some of the things that I like that she now likes. So any of those. What do you like most about Shay? Man, probably the stuff that gets on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I mean that with as much love as possible. <laughs> but, um, God, she's so loyal. Like, she's, and she means what she says. And, like, she's not going to sugarcoat anything. Um, that, you know, she, she has strong relationships, you know, so that's, I, you know, I love the fact that she's intelligent and she's, oh God, and it gets on my nerves so bad, but I love it because I need it, mm-hmm. like, that she'll ask, like, I'll come with her for an idea and she'll ask me a million fucking questions, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, golly, can you just listen to my mm-hmm. idea and just be like, Okay. Mm-hmm. No, she's gonna be like, <laughs> and then I have to like, <laughs> and what I hate about it is that it it challenges me because Absolutely. I have to like get my feelings out of it because sometimes like she talks about my tone but she has a tone. She doesn't think she has a tone but she's got a tone, but it's it's not what you would think it was. So if she's in her serious voice and she's asking you all these questions about your idea. I'm feeling insecure about it because I'm like, oh, shit, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe mm-hmm. it's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Because she's not given, like, the sugar coat. Oh, well, that's a good idea, but have you thought about this? Now, she'll be like, well, what about that? Mm-hmm. Uh, have you thought about this? You know, so, mm-hmm. and it, it's more just her style. It's, she don't mean no harm by it, but it's just the way she processes it. And I hate it, but I love it. Oh, this but if it's a home. bad idea, I will immediately dismiss it as stupid, and I don't have any questions. Mm-hmm. So if it's a good idea, my mind starts going, well, "What? How do we? How do we implement?" It? Absolutely. So she's Absolutely. a visionary, and I'm an implementer. So like she has the vision, I go, "These are the questions. These are the things that it takes to get there." So in my mind, I'm thinking if she ain't got no questions, I'm like, "Yes, it's a great idea." You know what, what I'm saying? Because I'm like, she ain't got no questions to ask. So maybe, you know, I've got to look forward to the questions. <laughs> and then it's funny because, like, I've trained myself now, whereas before, if I come up with, a, like, a question or something, I'll just ask it, like, as soon as it pops in my brain. But, like, if I ever approach her with, with anything now, I'll be like, well, what would Shay ask me? <laughs> if she asked me this. So I would go through, like, a list of possible questions that she would ask me, and then I would answer them first and then come up with a way around it. And then so whenever I do come up with the idea it's stuff that i haven't thought about so gotcha. okay same question 
So the thing that I love the most about Cat is that one that she does have vision, so she has great vision, and that Cat is probably the most open and loving person I've ever been in a relationship with. Like, she loves me with a hundred percent of who she is all the time, and there is like. I've never experienced anything like that. I've never had someone open their self to me like that. I don't think that I've reached that point with her yet, but that's the level that I strive to be with. I don't think she, I don't think she holds anything back from me. So I get all of that from her all the time. There was one thing that you could fix about Kat. What would it be? Kat's super emotional. Cat is super <laughs> emotional. So, Cat also has amazing uh, ability to read uh, to her emotions, getting from, which causes her, with me specifically, to misread a lot of things because she in, re, she interprets it through her emotions versus through what she actually feels. Mm -hmm. So, where she's spot on with a lot of people, she's a lot of times off with me mm -hmm. and if I could fix that because what happens is like she said she gets in her head so mm -hmm. she's like oh her tone means this and she'll create this whole scenario <laughs> of why I'm mad or why I said I didn't want to stop for coffee this morning <laughs> into a million things I'm like what so now okay so now I've told you five times I don't have an attitude I was just tired and it's early in the morning and I didn't want to stop or talk about nothing. It wasn't specific to you, but she's like, no, because blah, 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 blah. So now, yes, I do have attitude because uh -huh. I told you, you uh -huh. still feel like it. So now attitude here. Gotcha. So gotcha. if that was the one thing, that would be it. What would you fix? Oh, man. She, one thing. Is it because it's so many? What? There's only two. If I can only choose one. Which one would I want more? Oh, okay. I got it. So, for her not go, like, to withdraw. Like, because when she's like stressed or like she's mad or something about like she goes into herself and like she calls me a she, turtle she shuts the world out mm -hmm. and because I could feel like regardless of whether or not it's directed to me I feel it right and so I'm like right <laughs> at least let me be the one that let me right. be the only one to be able to come in right but I'm shut out with everybody else so that I would shut the turtle. Okay. Center on that. Yeah. Okay. What advice would you give couples desiring a healthy same sex relationship? I, mean, I think it would be the same for any relationship. My advice is to have the hard conversations. Mm -hmm. I think that what I noticed both in our relationship and from being married to somebody who we're now friends with, we talked through kind of what happened. Mm -hmm. I think we have, like you said earlier, the picket idea of what marriage is so we think that if there are any problems then we're a problem so you avoid the conversations you avoid the things that you feel that you don't say and you basically sweep them under a the rug until you trip over it and there's no way to deny it and now you don't know how you got there you know what I'm saying and you don't know the person across from you because the, as y'all have grown and decided we're not gonna address this you've grown through that they've grown through that and they've you've grown at different rates or you know things have impacted you differently and you've never talked about it you know I know that uh during one times in my marriage I we my family was going through so much death and it was just so much like I lost in it basically in the span of like three years ten people mm -hmm. ten really close people not like the old uncle or the old you know what I'm saying but like my cousins that were that I grew up with like sisters and brothers and then their moms and that you know and from both sides and some of them tragically some of them very sensationally um and like she said i, I have a uh you know i have a shell but sometimes it does take cattle ask are you okay or or force the conversation about i know you're not okay mm -hmm. and i think that you know you have to do that for the things that are going on but also when you're sitting in those silences in your relationship and i think 
it's important for you to be able to sit in silence with each other. You shouldn't have to fill the space, but you know when that space is heavy. And a lot of times we don't address that. We don't ask, why does this feel like this? We pretend it's okay. And you got to have that conversation. You got to say, well, what are you feeling? Or what are the things that don't make you happy? Mm -hmm. I need to understand what what, what that one thing is for her. Just like she has to understand what that one thing is for me. Because that's the thing I'm striving to get past. Not the thing she should be shoving under the rug. Mm. And I, I just, I would just say have those conversations. Um. Piggyback off of Shay's answer, like I do feel like it doesn't matter like gender wise, but as far as like having a healthy relationship, um, I do feel like being your own person and making sure that you stay true to who you are um, in the relationship, you know, because I'm very, uh, I, and I had to work on this a lot, I'm very clean, right? So I've had to learn how to like entertain myself and, and um, you know, not have her as my like number one source of entertainment, you know? <laughs> um, Cause she might be busy so just being able to to do the things that i'm passionate about um and i feel like that's important for two people to be like that in a relationship um so that way they have different things to bring to the table so um and just and like i said before you know loving the other person for who they are and not trying to change them because you know we were talking about the white picket fence and you know relationships is supposed to be like that and it's supposed to feel like this but that's not true, you know, nobody's flawless, you know, so it's just about being who you are in the relationship and loving the person that you're with for who they are. Beautiful. Last question. If your relationship was considered for a movie, a song, a book, or a poem, what would the title be? <laughs> it would be Undefined. Is that the name of the song? <laughs> that would be the name okay. of the song or the book. Would it be a song? That you would sing out loud the karaoke? Would it be the karaoke version? I would sing it out loud. <laughs> I would sing it out loud. I'll go with that one. I'll Undefined. go with that one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We have Kat and Shay on Relationship Rhetoric. And at the end of each show, I try to leave you with a notion of love to take with you. And your notion this week is once somebody reveals to you who they are, believe them. This has been Relationship Rhetoric. I'm your host, Unapologetically Angela. Peace, love, and enlightenment. And the other. Love. Sex. Desire. Drama. Lovers. And the others. <laughs> and we talk about it all here on Relationship. <laughs>